All right, Shalom, Shalom, Yasharala. Before we get started, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory unto the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Baha Shem, Yahweh Shai, Baha Shem, Rakakodash. Peace and salutations to the Akim out there pushing his truth across the four corners of the earth. And double honors unto the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, who taught us this truth and who do real well. It's the Brother Shapal out of Fort Worth, Texas, in the U.S. of A. All right, coming to you with another. Uh, Edification video, hopefully, you know, by the time you finish it, uh, you know, you have a better understanding of the scriptures. Um, basically, title of the lesson is going to be, so what if some don't believe? You know, so what? All right, because we already know through the scripture, all right, that this is not for everybody. All right, for this go around, it's, it's mainly for the elect. All right, which have already been predestinated since the beginning um, to follow the Most High and the Messiah, uh, wherever, um, what scripture is that? Wherever that be. Um, let me see. All right, this is the book of Ruth, Ruth, chapter 1, verse 16. It says, And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee or to re return from following after thee. Right, it's, it'd be a terrible thing to, to not endure to the end, to, to fall out of this thing. All right, it says, For whether thou goest, I will go, and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people. And thy power, my power, all right? Um, and I just, you know, that was the first one that came to mind. Um, I do have a little list of other scriptures, but um, that one in particular came to mind, and I don't believe I have it written down. Um, now, I mean, pretty much, you know, you know, the the we're in the beginning stages of Jacob's trouble, you know, and, you know, the end of the world is near. And what, what, when we say that, people literally think that, you know, this world is coming to an end. But when you go into certain definitions of world, one of them is, uh, or etymology rather, of world, one of those, uh, one of the words is uh, aeon or eon, eon, my bad, eon, which simply means age. All right, because there is a, uh, basically, Esau's rulership is coming to an end, whether he knows it or not. And I believe he does, you know, which is why he's starting to come down a little hard. Phase two of coronavirus right around the corner. Um, he'll be impl implementing more strict, uh, you know, uh, uh, decrees, unrighteous decrees, such as, you know, um, uh, you know, forcing mandatory vaccinations, microchipping, et cetera, et cetera, you know, earlier curfews. Um, you know how the whole routine goes. Martial law takes place. Um, and basically, you know, like I was saying, this, his, 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 his rulership is over. All right. This, um, and then the kingdom of heaven will be established here on the earth all right so this is revelation 11 and 14 it says the second woe is past and behold the third woe cometh quickly all right so the second woe is referring to uh the world war ii all right and that third world war is coming you know it's relatively soon we don't know exactly when but it's coming soon all right and i just read something about um $59 trillion debt. Woo. Now, this was on... Um, yeah, there it goes right there. Total U.S. debt surges to $55.9 trillion. 
amid big increases in corporate and government borrowing. Now, how do you think, um, you know, the, the, in, in, what's the like here? Now, how do you think this affects the already, um, um, rigid, uh, relations between the U.S. and other countries? All right. Shit's already been on edge, you know? And, and now, I mean, before this, I believe it was like 29 trillion, 20, 25, it may have been a little more. I could be wrong, but, you know, it just, it completely doubled, damn near skyrocketed, you know, in the matter of days or weeks, however long it was. But it, it, it you know, it's completely just um, skyrocketed, all right? Now, this you got to understand, this is going to affect the already, like I said, uh, tainted or rigid relations uh, between the U.S. and the other, uh, you know, entities out there, the other countries. All right. But like it says right here, it says, And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his uh, and of Hamashiach. And he shall reign forever and ever, all right? The only kingdom that was never prophesied to have an end is the kingdom of heaven, all right? Which will be uh, reigned by Yahweh Shai, all right? Under the spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, um, you know, and, and rightfully so, you know, because we've had it with this kingdom, all right? Even Esau's had it with this kingdom, all right? You see, it's a lot of, uh, it's even a lot of Edomites, uh, a lot of others of uh, heathen nations out there protesting as well, you know. It's a lot of Jake as well, don't get me wrong, you so-called blacks, Latinos, Native Americans. It's a lot of Israelites out there as well. But everybody's fed up with this wicked system now. Let me get a preset for that. It's a rock. Um, uh, 10, I believe. Yep, right here. It says, because of unrighteous dealings, injuries, and riches got by deceit. Now, just, just meditate on those three things really quick, really quick you know? Who, who fits this, you know, all throughout history, who fits these things to a T? You know, who, who, who le you know who's the, uh, uh, I guess, the godfather of unrighteous dealings, injuries, and riches got by deceit, all right? so-called white man and it says the kingdom is translated from one people to another all right which that kingdom being translated is from esau's rulership here in in which is a rulership of wickedness and um you know um you know based upon lies and deceit like it says right here in verse eight the rich is got by deceit all right and that'll be uh you know translated through, uh, you know, a mass, uh, you know, a lake of fire, basically, in the scripture, you know, uh, where all things are burnt up and, uh, you know, brought down to an end, wherein they will be, Esau, Edom, in particular, will have to be uh, repaid double according to his works, all right? And this is all scriptural. You know, the heathen nations, the 16 other heathen nations are going to be subject. They're, you know, they're going to be in bondage as well, but it's not going to be as hardcore as Esau, Edom. They're going to be subject to the laws uh, and to whatever we say, you know, which the law will be put in our inward part. We will be perfect. All right. So we would literally be, um, you know, gods again, yet again. Under, of course, the rightful order and uh, uh, rulership. Of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Um, let me see, it's like you. Um, Isaiah. So a lot of people don't seem to understand that. And actually, before I get that, let me get this. Because I think most of the problem is that, um, you know, like it says right here in Hosea 4 and 6, 
says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. All right, so the Most High not dealing with everybody. Off back. Let's get out that out the way. It says that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy power. I will also forget thy children. All right, so part of the punishment for Israel, you know, disobeying, which you could read about that in Deuteronomy 28, the curses, all right, was that, you know, we would forget who we were. All right, but part of end time prophecies, how we know that the end is near, amongst many other things, is that it was prophesied in uh, Daniel um, 12, I believe. Right, in verse 4 it says, But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall be increased and knowledge is being increased at the end in the end whereas you know a few decades ago we had no idea who we were you know personally speaking uh two three years ago i had no idea who i was all right i had no idea that i was a biblical israelite that i was a real you know uh, a northern kingdom israelite all right that we are the real jews which really southern kingdom are the jews but you know it just goes to show how deceitful and how, uh, you know, how slithery of a snake the so-called white man is. All right. Because we were once, you know, part of that, uh, that valley of dry bones, man. All right. Um, this is Ezekiel 37 and 3. It says, and he said unto me, son of man, can these bones live? And I answered O oh Lord, Yahweh, thou knowest, right? Because the Most High knows everything. He already has it all laid out, all right? It's like you've seen a movie, all right? And you're watching it again with somebody who hasn't seen it. Like, you already know what's coming, all right? But, anyways, it says, again, he said unto me, prophesy unto these, upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord, all right? Because, you know, it was once a point in time we didn't have an understanding. You know, we called ourselves Mexican. We called ourselves, you know, uh, minorities. When really, you know, we're, we're the chosen children of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai, the creator of all things. All right. And the elect know that. The elect find out. All right. In their lifetime, they end up finding out whether they be born in the U.S., whether they be born anywhere. They come across it. All right? It's set up and, and programmed by the creator of all things to be that way. All right. Um, but most of our people, you know, it's not even just the lack of knowledge. It's not even just rejecting knowledge. I think the problem with our people mostly is that they like sound good things. You know, when not everything is is sweet, there's also bitter too. All right. So this is Jeremiah 4 and 22. It says, For my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are sottish children, which sottish simply means stupid. Basically, you know, they're, they're stupid. Are sottish children and they have none understanding, right? Because part of first coming into this thing is you got to understand that you have to be, re, you have to relearn, uh, unlearn, and basically, you know, coming to the understanding that the book lays out all right because it's all laid out but you can't lean onto your own understanding and that's in the scripture as well it says and they have none understanding they are wise to do evil but to do good they have no knowledge and that's most of our people you know when it comes to hit licks or or you know you know scamming or anything like that you know you know they're, they're wise to do evil but to do good which what is good all right There it goes. The law is good. All right. And that's First uh, Timothy. Yep. It says, but we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. All right. Uh, scripture also says, um, all things expedient. Oops, I spelled that wrong. Damn. <laughs> 
expedient. There we go. It says, all things are lawful for me. This is 1 Corinthians 10 and 23. It says, all things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. All right. So remembering that, you know, we are yet in our captivity. You know, we are, uh, you know, in this flesh, you know, we can't be perfect. We strive for it, you know, and we fall short a lot. Many times, you know, many, many times. All right. But the whole point of repentance, which was given unto Israel, all right. Is, you know, that we're, we're able to rehearse the righteous acts because it's easy. It's easier to fall into the desires of this flesh and, and move about this world in, in, in that manner. Than to, than to walk in the spirit. So we have to know how to remain a balance. All right, this is Acts 5 and 29. It says, Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey the Most High rather than men. The, the God of our fathers raised up Yahweh Shai, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him, Yahweh Shai, hath the Most High exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. All right. So, going into some more, uh, you know, uh, basically understanding prophecy, all right, we go to 2nd Edges 9 and just start from the top, really. It says, He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the signs past, past which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. All right. So the most highest, uh, or rather Yahweh Shai is prepping, um, you know, he's, he's, he's uh, uh, basically getting everything ready to, uh, you know, make his return. All right. Well, all this stuff is unfolding here on earth in this physical plane. All right. Um, you know, he, he's getting he's getting his sword ready. All right. It says, therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, which the riots. All right. And there there have been many of earthquakes in diverse places. We could just go ahead and. Um, I guess chart. We could just look at the. Let me see. You know, you got... I mean, these are all within... Today's the 12th, so these are all within the past week, you know? In diverse places. Let's see. You know, you have these two today. One day... Okay, these are all in the span of, you know, a day or two. Literally, in a day or two, 40 of them. You got a 5.8, a 4.7, a 4.6, 4.7. I mean, you got a bunch, you know, in diverse places, like it's stated. All right. Um, so, reading on in verse 4, it says, Then shalt thou well understand that the Most High spake he spoke of the, these things from the from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. All right? It's all been laid out. It's all been predestinated. You know, you often have people asking for a sign. Lord, give me a sign. You know, that DMX song, you know, asking for a sign. All right. But you got to understand scripture and, and know, uh, you know, what the signs will be because he told you he has told us, you know, it says, for like as all that is made in the world hath a beginning and an end, just like the age of Esau's rulership has a beginning and an end, and the end is manifest. All right, it says, even so the times also of the highest have plain beginnings and wonder and powerful works and endings and effects and signs. Right, what about UFO sightings? I mean, I believe this year we've had, I mean, a lot, like more than any other year, you know. Which is why Trump, you know, he 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 really uh you know pushing that uh space force thing, 
you know? And the UFOs are the chariots, man. You know, which is why they want to go against it, all right? They want to go against it. It says, and everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith, right? Because faith alone is, isn't, I mean, it's enough, you know? Faith is, is first and foremost the most important thing that we have, all right? Because without faith, I believe that's Hebrews, yeah. It says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to the Most High must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith, Noah, being warned of the Most High of things not seen as yet, moved with fear. Preached for over a hundred years, right? And it says, it goes on to say, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, right? He preached for over a hundred years and, you know, guess what? He only said, only eight people were saved. So it says, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. All right. So brothers, some brothers and sisters will be saved by faith and faith alone. All right. Some of us, some of y'all, you know, will. But does that mean we rely on faith and faith alone? Because James 2 goes into that. All right. It says, uh, um, verse 14, it says, What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he have faith and have not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, right? You don't give them the give them clothes, you don't give give uh, food, you know. Um, what doth it profit? Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. Now a lot of people in the you know, in the end of the end will be saved by just their faith and they'll be justified by that alone all right because that was that was their lot to be set up to you know not know about it until the very end more than likely and then you know they come into the faith and boom you know Yahweh Shai makes his return um so it says even so faith if it hath not works is dead being alone right so since we know this and we're not in the end yet, like scriptures say, he that endureth unto the end, the same shall be saved. All right. So because we know this, we must put forth some sort of work. We must labor in the truth. All right. Which it's 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 faith, it's praying, it's fasting, it's you know, it's it's moving in the spirit, man. You know, it's it's uh you know, preaching a true gospel, all right. It's all of these things, all right. But like it says uh, in verse 18, it says, Yeah, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by thy works, or by my works. And that's right, man. That's right. It says, verse 21, Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? I mean, how much, how much more of a sacrifice uh, could there possibly be? It says, seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was his faith made perfect. That's right, man. So, of course, faith and for, for, faith for, first and foremost, all right? But, um, you know, we got to understand that to get a better understanding on these things, we have to, you know, well, first and foremost, the Most High has to pour his spirit upon you, Um Um, it says, turn, uh, Proverbs 1 and 23, it says, turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you, right? So without his spirit, it's impossible for his words to be known, uh, by you, you know? Um, um, let me see. This is, uh, pretty much where I got the title of the lesson Romans 3 and 3 it says for what if some did not believe shall their unbelief make the faith of the most high without effect 
Yahweh forbid. Yeah, let our power be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings and mightest overcome when thou art judged. And that's right. We're looking to overcome adversity and hardships, which which there, you know, we already go through things on a daily basis. But, um, you know, what's to come is going to be uh, far more serious, you know, far more, far more serious and, and you know, strenuous. I believe that's the worst I'm looking for strenuous. You know, it's going to be it's going to be uh, it's, it's a task at hand, you know. It says, Acts 7 and 51, Yea, stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, yea, do always resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did, so do ye. All right? So, there, there is, is people, you know, like, we, like I stated in the beginning of the video, um, this is really for the elect, this go-around. Now, there is a one-third of the great multitude spoken about in the scripture um, that... That, that will be saved by the mercy of the Heavenly Father, all right? Men, women, and children who are Israelites, all right? But, and, and that, that is their lot. Just as there is wicked, right? There is righteous. And just as, uh, you know, like it says right here, as your fathers did, so do ye, all right? Because regeneration, uh, they, in the world, they call it reincarnation, but regeneration is in the scripture, all right? This isn't our first go around here on this earth, all right? When we, when we, when this physical body dies, the spirit leaves it, returns into the heavenly father, receives judgment, and then returns back into the earth to live out that judgment. Now, you got many like atheists and many non-believers out there, but like we, what we just read in Romans 3 and 3, you know, so what? So what? If some don't believe, man, you know, that's why I wanted to entitle this video. You can't let that uh, determine, you know, your walk, you know, you can't let that determine uh, how you move, you know, because, hey, we're not on the, all on the same plane. You know, we're not on the, all on the same playing field. It's like you could compare it to athletes. All right. You got you got your superstars. You got your all stars. You got your, you know, your 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 players that are specialize in a certain skill, whether in the NBA, that'd be three-point shooter, a defensive lockdown, a rebounder, whatever the case may be, a slasher, all right? And then you got your six man. You got your, your you know, which a lot of six men are the shit. But and, and staying on topic, you know, you got your bench players. You got your role players, you know. You got levels, all right? And the most high, he's dealing with order. Um... But yeah, like I said, um, part of the end time prophecies was that the Israelites would wake up into they into who they are, and, and you know having the understanding of the scripture is a beautiful thing that that we've been able to receive this and actually go out and labor with the truth through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahshai. Man, nothing. I mean, this is the greatest uh, the greatest office, uh, you know. Uh, the greatest office of being an Israelite, man, is to be a prophet, you know, to be used as that tool to to awaken your people, you know. Um, one in Matthew 24 and, uh, right, it says in 14, it says, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And all nations are witnessing it, whether it be uh, they're witnessing it like Israel. Oh, you know, waking up to who they are or, you know, Esau eat them, <laughs> you know, the 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 shame and, and 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 guilt that comes with finding out who they are, according to the scripture. All right. Because the thing is, when we come out and saying the things that we say, we're not just saying it just to say it. No, we come straight out of the book, man. We come straight out of the book. All right. And that's the whole thing. We confound, uh, you know, we confound many people, especially the. Apostles and elders, you know, um, you know, you could you could watch many of their uh, videos and, you know, they're confounding so-called Christians uh, 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 every week, man, you know, by coming straight out of the book. And that's how we do it, man. And that's a beautiful thing. But like it says in this gospel of the kingdom 
shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. So the whole doctrine of Christianity and Catholicism, all right, it's been around for hundreds, for thousands of years, all right, they don't have the truth because it seems like, you know, I believe it's been half of a, a century, like 50 years that, that, you know, that we know of at least or that I know of that, you know, uh, uh, you know, our, our people been waking up. All right. And look at all the things that have been manifesting within that time. You know, it's a beautiful thing. Um. But the point is, man, you know, a lot of y'all, you know, there, there's only one way out, man. There's only one way out. And that's through the straight gate. I believe that's how it was spelled. It was, I don't think it was spelled straight, like just straight. It may have been. No. Where was that at? Uh... Straight. I know. I think it's in Ezra's. Man, I hate when that happens. But, anyways, man, it's through the straight gate, man. Right. I don't think this is exactly what I was looking for, but this is a precept to it, man. It says, uh, Second Edris 7 and 6. It says, There is also another thing. A city is builded and set upon a broad field and is full of all good things. All right? This is in, in reference to the kingdom of heaven. All right? It says, The entrance thereof is narrow and is set in a dangerous place to fall, like as if there were fire on the right hand and on the left a deep water. And and one only path between them both, even between the fire and the water, so small that there could but one man go there at once. All right. So we have to remember, you know, this is a straight, you know, uh, straight is the path that lead into, um, you know, straight and narrow is the path that lead, lead into the kingdom of heaven. All right. That leads into that, uh, that eternal glory. All right. But broad is the way that leadeth into destruction. It says... It says, uh, if this city now were given unto a man for an inheritance, if he never shall pass the danger set before it, how shall he receive this inheritance? And I said, it is so, Lord. Then said he unto me, even so also is Israel's portion. All right. So all throughout scripture, man, these, you know, all these precepts, this is all for Israel. This is all for Israel. All right. Because these devils, they have to pay for what they've done, man. It's simple, you know, the world calls it karma, but simply what goes around comes around, all right? Especially you, you've done this unto the children of the chosen children of the Most High. You got a, a lot of y'all, uh, so called white people, you Edomites, y'all got a rude awakening coming, man. And it's, and it's, it's, it brings joy to our hearts, man, because it's, it's been a long time coming, man. And it really has. It's been a long time coming, man. You know, to think of all the things that our people went through, still go through to this day. Which we know a lot of these, a lot of these, uh, you know, uh, false flag events are staged, you know, to bring about certain things. All right. Um, you know, like, for example, the George Floyd thing. I'm not saying he didn't die, who knows, but we do know he, he was a Freemason, you know, and, you know, could very well have been a sacrifice, all right, to bring on these things, all right, which will in turn lead into the new world order, that one world government where martial law will be in, in effect, you know, mandatory vaccinations and things like that will be in effect, all right. So we're not ignorant of Satan's devices, man, all right, and I think that's the point, you know, um... I'm kind of, I know I'm kind of all over the place with scripture, but hey, I'm just moving through the spirit, man. You know, wherever the spirit take me, you know, um, there's one another one in Matthew 24, I believe it's more towards the end. Uh, right, right there, 37. It says, but as the days of Noah were, 
so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. All right. And where whereas we give warning, we take heed to what the scripture is saying. We take heed to what the apostles and elders have been telling us for for years and years and years. All right. Most don't because they they they, they they've been told that the end of the world. Oh, 2020 was supposed to uh, Y2K. The year 2000 was supposed to be the end of the world. And this in turn it not coming for a lot of people. They take it as a joke. They don't take it as as serious, you know, because there has been so many, uh, you know, lies basically and and you know mis uh you know misled uh 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 you know prophesying um but like it says but as the days of Noah were so shall also the coming of the son of man be for as in the days that were before the flood all right they were eating and drinking marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark all right and then and what when that happened what were they doing they were banging on the fucking door all right, they were banging on the door, begging to get in. You know, it says, "And knew not until the flood came and took them all away." So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So when Shai makes his return, which the second judgment is going to be by the way of fire. All right, uh, you know he's coming with a sword, man. And Scripture talks about um, I can't think of exactly what it says. This is roughly paraphrasing, but it talks about uh, him 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 having a red garment, man. You know, and that's that's a um, you know that's basically a metaphor for all the blood that is going to be shed in that day, man, in that hour. <laughs> you know, and, and, and most people can't seem to grasp that because all their life they've been fed this, you know, this prosperity doctrine only of oh, all love, all all good, all which this is good, man. This is something that must take place. All right. What does it say in Romans 9, you know? Is the Most High then unrighteous, right? So this is uh, Romans 9 and 11. It says, For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of the Most High according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth, it was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. And that is refer uh, this is referring to... Uh, in the book of Genesis with uh, Jacob and Esau. All right. It says, verse 13, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. So even, uh, so like, yeah, this is um, uh, Apostle Paul. This is Apostle Paul speaking. Just like, like he says, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with the Most High? God forbid, all right? Yahweh forbid, man. You know, there isn't. So what the word, the thing is, man, you got to understand all these churches, all right? Like Scripture talks about, um, so like, like Scripture talks about, um, in John 15, all right? Right. This isn't of our own doing, man. We've been chosen, whether it be for the long run uh, to the end or just for a short time. We have been chosen and we need to be thankful for that opportunity every single day, man. John 15 and 16, it says, "Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. All right. So go and bring forth fruit. Go and preach the gospel and bring forth good fruit. Preach the true gospel, not not partial gospel. You know, you got uh, all these other Israelite camps who have the 501c3. You know, they, they and Apostle Gabar went into their lesson a day. You know, that was very edifying. But anyways, it says, uh, and that your fruit should remain, that whosoever ye shall ask of, of the Father, or that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. He may give it you. These things I command you, that ye love one another. If the world hates you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. All right. It says, if ye were of the world, the world would love his own. All right. So all these churches, half of the world following Christianity, you know, it goes to show that they do not have the true gospel, that they do not have the true understanding of the scripture. Because guess what? The Most High hasn't poured his spirit upon them because they are worldly. 
They refuse to turn back to the law, statutes, and commandments. They refuse to abide by what the scriptures say. Um, you know, they refuse to walk as we were instructed to walk. They rather just go to church every Sunday, all right? And, you know, they don't want to deal with the Sabbath. They don't want to deal, deal with any of the high holy days. Um, you know, like like in Jeremiah 10, it says, you know, they, um, um, you know, they, they follow after the ways of the heathen. All right. So the, the things that they teach are of the world. All right. Whereas we coming into the end, waking up into we, who we are, bringing out the true gospel. All right. Waking up our people through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shimei All right. Like it says, but I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world hated you. And, and most people cannot stand the things that we say, the, the, the way that we move. Uh, our, our spirits simply just rub them the wrong way. All right. They will call us racist. They will call us this, that, and the third. But they don't understand how truly, truly, truly righteous this is for the Heavenly Father to be making all these things manifest. Um, so like it. Let me, let me hit the light real quick. <sighs> getting kind of dark sunset hitting all right bubba kasasa like you bear with me um but yeah man i mean you know, the true gospel is being brought out. And, and the whole point of this video was, you know, so what if some don't believe? All right. Because a lot of people do have knowledge. All right. A lot of people do have, a, 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 you know, a, a, a zeal about them. It's so like, yeah, a lot of people do have a zeal about them, but not according to knowledge. Like it says right here in Romans 10 and 2, all right? Um, let me see. There's another one in John. And that's right. We're getting the blood off our hands, man, you know? We're getting the blood off our hands, whether whether they want to believe or scoff, it don't matter, you know. You you have been warned, you know. You have been warned, all right. Let's go to Ezekiel, because there's there's a, a a great precept in Ezekiel for, you know, for the times that we're coming into, all right. Um, no, this ain't what I'm looking for. Oh, let me grab my sword real quick. I know it's in Ezekiel. Twelve, that's right, Ezekiel twelve. Right. Ezekiel twelve and twenty one. It says, and the word of the Most High came unto me, saying, Son of man, what is that proverb that ye have in the land of Israel, saying, The days are prolonged, and every vision faileth? All right, and that's exactly the spirit of these people in, here in, uh, you know, Babylon the Great, modern Egypt, modern, uh, uh, you know, Babylon, uh, modern uh, Rome. You know, they, 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 they don't see the things coming to pass and how this is all laid out in Scripture. All right. But like it says in Matthew 13 and 16, it says, but blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. All right. Now let's go back to Ezekiel 12. And I'm going to go ahead and cut it out here in a minute. Um, you know, I just, I knew I needed to make a video, man, you know. And uh, there we go. So like it says, Son of man, what is that proverb that ye have in the land of Israel, saying the days are prolonged and every vision faileth? Tell them, therefore, thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, I will make this proverb to cease. Right? He's going to shut that down. Just like then, he's going to do it now. It says, and they shall no more use it 
as a proverb in Israel, but say unto them, the days are at hand and the effect of every vision. All right. So just as then in Ezekiel 12, he told Ezekiel, hey, say unto these people, guess what? You know, that shit's dead. The days are at hand. All right. Yahweh Shai told us the same thing. All right. This is uh, Matthew 4 and 17. It says, From that time, Yahweh Shai began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And that's the same thing. That's the same exact thing we're telling these people today. You know, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, man. And the, the, that day, that day draweth nigh. All right. It, it is upon us, you know. It's time to uh, move a little more seriously, man. You know, it, it, it's it's time to, you know, get right, man. You know, to turn back to the reproofs of the higher power, man. Because like I was going to say earlier, and I think it slipped my mind, um, you know, a lot of our people, they want to rely on, on carnal things like weapons. They want to rely on a, on a leader to come and rescue them. You know, they want to rely on on a, a you know a mere mortal to come and 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 raise their people up and you know uh you know I guess somehow defeat Esau's military and then and their uh tactical forces you know that's not going to happen the only way that we're getting out of this like I was saying there is only one way out and that's the straight gate all right getting right with Yahweh Shem Shai and turning back to his ways man forsaking this life all right because like like it says in scripture uh I die daily, I believe, is is what it says. Yeah. 1 Corinthians 15 and 31, it says, I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Hamashiach, Yahawashai, our Lord. I die daily, you know? We, 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 you know, this place, this isn't our rest, man, you know? We, we still face, a, you know, tribulation. We still face, a, you know, um you know, hardships and, and, and many other things that the system has laid out for us to, uh, for as obstacles, basically, you know, and it sucks, you know, we make the best of it. You know, we, we, you know, we're glad for the opportunity because we could have it a lot worse. All right. But the point is, you know, we, we, for here, we have no continuous city. All right, Hebrews 13 and 14, it says, For here we have no continuing city. All right, if it were, if we didn't have a Lord and Savior, if Yahweh Shai and the Heavenly Father was not on our side, we'd be fucked, man. We would be fucked. We would be, we would be systematic slaves here for eternity. For eternity, because we would never be able to throw the, the power that is, uh, you know, Esau Edom. So like it says, for here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. And that's beautiful, man. All right. Um, Proverbs 21. It says, the man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Woo, or the dry bones, man. You know? The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding, right? Which there's only one understanding. You, you got all these different philosophies and, and doctrines of the world, whether it be with the Bible or not, you know? But truthfully, there is only one truth, man. And that's what we have right here, man, because they try to taint it, you know, and a lot of our people say, oh, that's the white man's book. The white man wrote that book. <laughs> A lot of our people are fooled, man. It says Colossians uh, 2 and 8. It says, Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Hamashiach. All right? And we're not looking to go that way, man. You know? We're not looking to take that route because we know if we stick to the script, you know, Arwan Rataza, what's awaiting us on the other side, man? This is but for a mere temporary sacrifice, man. So like we said, man, when Yahweh Shai makes his return, this place is done. All right, it says, I come to send fire on the earth, and what will it 
And what will I if it be already kindled? All right. You know, that's talking about the thermonuclear destruction. It's already going to be kindled, man. You know. It says, suppose yeah, that I come to give peace on earth. I tell you nay, but rather division. Woo, man. See, you Christians, man, y'all just don't have it, bro. Simply put, y'all just do not have it. All right. Um, now, let me get... Um, let me see. Uh, uh, Peter. Second Peter. Um... And that's right. That's what they say, man. It says Second Peter three and four. It says in saying. Okay, let's start it. Uh, started two. It says that you may be mindful, or let's start from the top, man. It says this second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, and of the commandments. And of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai Mashiach. Right? It says, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, unbelievers, right? But so what? It says, walking after their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of his coming? Right? Where Where is it? Even 2000, we was ready for it. 2012, they were saying, you know, for since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of the uh, by the word of the Most High the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. All right, so we have all these examples, all right, uh, of what type of men not to be and what type of men to be. You know, we have all these examples. I right? it says, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. In the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. And, and, and you know, um, uh, Salakia, slipping my mind. The good man, house. All right, let's see what that brings up. Right, Matthew 24. It says, watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. And that's right. We don't know exactly the hour. All right. But these prophecies, these prophecies un unraveling at such a rate that they are is, is showing us a, you know, prepare yourselves, prepare yourselves, prepare yourselves, prepare yourselves, get ready, rehearse the righteous acts. All right. It says, but know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come. He would have watched. He would have watched. So just as the good man of the house, if he had known uh, what watch the thief would come, if he would have known that he was going to be robbed that night, like it says in Second Peter 3, that the day of the Lord cometh as a thief in the night. He would have watched and would, have not, and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore, be ye also ready for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. All right, and that's right, man. We have to be we have to be diligent. We have to be circumspect, and we have to be, uh, which basically circumspect means accurate, precise. We have to be on point, man. We have to be on our p's and q's and be prepared. Of course, obviously, we fall short. We're not perfect, but you know, be aware of what's going around uh, in the world, man. Be aware of of you know the things taking place, the laws being implemented. Don't just you know, follow everything that you see on social media and believe it to be true, um, et cetera, et cetera, you know? So there's only one way out, man, the straight gate. Um, and like the title of the video is going to be, man, so what if some don't believe? All right, you can't let that hinder you. You can't let that uh, get to you, man. And, and, you know, really our thoughts play a huge role, man, which Lord willing, I'll, I'll be doing an edification video on that as well. But our, our thoughts play a huge role because our thoughts could we, we could condemn ourselves and, and fall out of the truth just by our own thoughts man we got to know that hey there, there's there's many spirits out there good and bad all right and some are trying to get into your head as well man so we got to be aware of that man all right 
But anyways, Lord willing, this video will be edifying. Um, it went on a little longer than expected, but, you know, hey, the spirit does what it wants. So, you know, with that being said, I'm going to close it out. Got to give all praise, honor, and glory unto the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakodash. Got to say peace, peace and salutations unto the Akim out there pushing his truth across the four corners of the earth. Double honors unto the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who taught us this truth and who do real well. And Shalawam to the Akwat, the sisters following, following in line and, and, you know, learning and listening as well. I say Shalawam to all y'all. Uh, until next time.